Hello. Um, okay, so now that we've had a think about what makes a good presentation um, and looked at some examples of PowerPoint uh, design, um, we're going to look at putting your plan into your prep into your PPT, uh, but also think about um, how you would like to develop your speech. Um, so top tips, I know I'm going over this again, but I really want you to um, internalize it and make sure it's embedded into your mind. Um, so choose a design that relates to my topic. Choose a font that feels appropriate. For instance, if it's a sad topic, you wouldn't use Comic Sans. One slide equals one point. Only words should be main ideas. So no full sentences, no paragraphs. Include music, videos, images, graphs, and diagrams. Ensure a logical sequence of slides and include a, a cover page, as well as either a thank you page or a Q&A page, uh, just so the audience know that either it's the end of the talk um, or we're now going to move into the question and answer stage. Just a quick reminder that you can plagiarise in speeches as well. So again, make sure that you have not copied anything directly from an article. It must be all of your own work and all of your own words. Okay, so turning a plan into a PPT. So you can see here that I've got my information and then I've already, I've done my storyboard. Okay, so I've had to think about what my PPT needs to look like. While it seems like it slows you down, doing this sort of planning actually speeds you up um, because you've already made those really important decisions on what's going to go where um, and when you're going to talk about each item. So each item or part might be more than one slide. For instance, you can see here I've got history. So, um, while originally found information development of social media change, um, how information obtained and benefits, I would say that this would be two, maybe three slides. So I'd start with um, uh, where it was uh, originated, the concept of social media. Then I may do um, a timeline about the story of social media's development. And then I might do a different uh, slide that will have pictures um, to show different ways that we obtain information. For instance, I might have a picture of Facebook, a picture of Twitter, um, and a picture of WeChat, um, which is different to sort of newspapers. Okay, so each section or each item or part that we see over here may be more than one slide and that's okay. Have a think about what's going to be your speech content for each of those slides. Again, when I'm looking at where originally found um, information, I might have a picture of uh, newspapers, um, I might have a picture of people communicating, which would be word of mouth. And in my actual speech, um, I'm not going to describe the pictures, they're just to complement what I'm saying. Uh, but in the actual speech, um, I'm going to talk about uh, the fact that we did start off um, originally communicating only verbally because we hadn't developed written language at that point. Um, and as I moved into the 17th, 18th century, newspapers became quite prolific. Um, and that's where we originally gathered our information from. So we need to think about not only the speech content, but the PowerPoint content or vice versa, PowerPoint content and the speech. So how am I going to link these two things together? Have a think if you need to change the order. Maybe you'd like to talk about uh, the result, the negative result of social media at the beginning and then talk about what we used to have at the end. And that's okay um, to change up the order so long as it still has a logical sequence. Do I need a linking slide? For instance, if you're going to be talking about China and then America in terms of part-time work, you might want to have a little linking slide uh, to move us from one country to another. Is there information that's not relevant uh, to this presentation? And have I found the most interesting information to prove my points? And then we're going to be working on the speech and the PowerPoint at the same time. So you need to decide how you'd like to prepare your speech. And there's two different ways that you can do that. Number one, you can use over the left-hand side, you can actually use your detailed plan um, to be your speech preparation. So making sure that you've got all the information, I know I'm gonna talk about this, then this, then this, and this, okay? There's no full sentences, um, but I know my information really well, so I don't really need to write it down. Alternatively, you can actually write your speech 
out loud, sorry, it was your speech in complete. Um, so this is a very famous speech um, by uh, Martin Luther King Jr. However, he practiced his speech so many times in front of friends and the mirror that when he actually gave this speech, it really sounded like it came from his heart. Uh, it sounded like it was authentic and he was just speaking um, off the top of his head. So it didn't seem like that. So these are two methods that you can prepare your speech for your presentation. So just to give some information. So if you're using a plan as a speech, um, it can increase your authenticity. So it can make it sound a lot more natural because you just know your information and the sentences will flow. So all you're thinking is the history. Now I'm going to talk about history rather than writing full sentences. However, it means you need a highly detailed plan. So you need to really strengthen and boost up that plan. You need to link your points through sentences naturally. So it means you need to be quite confident in your speaking ability. You need to ensure that your speaking is structured well, your sentences and sequencing. Again, that falls into having a really good detailed plan and making sure that you practice a lot. It requires that you know your topic inside and out. If you're doing hypoxia, which is quite a scientific topic, this might be a little bit difficult to do. Um, but if you're talking about part-time work, which relates to China, uh, it might be something that you can speak with uh, a little bit more easily and more confidently. So your PowerPoint and your plan need to be very closely linked as well. Okay, so the PowerPoint and the plan need to reflect each other. Next, if you decide instead that you'd like to write out your whole speech, it does ensure that you won't miss any information out. However, it does mean that you need to memorise the speech, but make it seem natural when speaking. So that means there's a lot of practice in front of the mirror. You can use palm cards to help. With palm cards though, we only put the main points and main words, okay, the same as note taking. You don't have full sentences on palm cards. You actually will get marked better if you know your information, okay? So it will be a better mark for you if you know your information and can speak off the top of your head. If you're reading off your PowerPoint or reading off a piece of paper, that's going to reduce your mark. Now, a great thing about writing out your whole speech, it makes it a lot easier to edit it and get it perfect. You can move things around, delete information, change your expression. So you almost have a lot more control over it. So you've just got to decide, do I want to use my plan as my speech or do I want to write the whole speech? Okay, both have good things and bad things attached to them. You just need to decide what's going to work better for you. But in both of them, you cannot read the speech or read the information off a piece of paper. You need to present and go through the same as your teachers do. When Terry or Mayuri or Damien or myself, when we present to you as teachers, we know the information. Um, to my knowledge, we don't sort of read off the book. All right, so you need to do that same thing. So today, I want you to create your initial PowerPoint. I want you to decide on your speech methodology, so whether you're going to write it out or use your plan. I'd like you to start gathering resources for your PowerPoint, so images and videos and graphs. Your first PowerPoint is due on June the 11th, so your first draft is due on June the 11th. However, if you start finish it earlier or you want to do a couple of uh, slides and send it to me, I'm more than happy to have a look and give you some direction, okay? So don't think just because it's due on the 11th, I'm very, very happy to see it um, and give you some feedback before you hand in that first draft. So I'd love you to start today, okay? Don't wait until you forget all the information. Any of my classes, you really should be doing the work we discussed in the video immediately after the video ends. So you leave it to the last minute, you're going to forget everything and then you're not going to end up with a great result. Before I go, I just wanted to show you some level three PPTs um, that um, uh, 12A have actually completed. Um, well, they're not perfect, they're pretty good. Um, and it's just an example of the sort of work that I'd expect from my 11A students as well. So first we'll have a look at Steve's. So Steve did um, a online education as his seminar. So in level three, you actually get to choose the topic that you're gonna do your presentation on, which is really exciting. So Steve, immediately his first, his first page is really exciting, really engaging. Um, it's got lots of color and vibrance, and it relates to me because I'm a student or that his audience is a student, okay? 
Then we've got pictures tab. If he has introduction, he's going to be saying, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about ed 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 online education. Okay. And during this speech, he actually talked about equality and fairness. So you see equality and fairness uh, and the fact that online education can change those. So this is a really clever way um, to show what he's really talking about and to make what he's talking about uh, visual to you. So he separated two things. Again, there's not a lot of um, words. He's really just summarised those main points. Using graphs as well, which is fantastic. Um, here he was talking about using YouTube, so he just had an image that related to his speech. Uh, and then he talked about all of the things that you could learn doing online education as opposed to traditional. Again, he's got some different uh, graphs and images to show what he's talking about making lots of fun. So you can see he's very positive about online education. So you can feel um, you're going to be impacted by the colours that he's using as well. And then uh, as with your essays and your PowerPoints, it's a full circle and we go back to the thesis statement, which is the fact that um, online education can equal equality and fairness in education. There's one example. The other one, I've got two boys, I apologise for that ladies, but um, uh, once Rebecca sends hers through, I'll be able to share that with you as well. So this is Alan. So Alan is talking about animals in entertainment. So he's got all of these images of animals. He's not given us a suggestion as to whether it's good or bad, which opens up a nice question like, oh, what is this presentation going to be about? He has done a contents page. This for me, I think is a bit too wordy. Um, but then as you can see, he's used um, the main points rather than putting full sentences and he goes through all these details. He's got pictures that relate to what he's talking about. And you can see the pictures aren't very favourable. They don't make you feel happy. They're kind of darkish colours. Um, so I can feel the sense that the person that is presenting maybe doesn't like animals being used in entertainment. He's also using a very logical order using some examples. This is a horrifying documentary um, and say no to, so he's trying to influence his audience through his images. Again, we've got some great images from all around the world, primarily images and really these have an impact um, on the audience that's watching them. He hasn't chosen positive images because he wants to influence the audience toward a particular thing. As I said earlier, um, you can use humour or you can use shock value. So you can see these pictures that he's definitely used shock value, which gains the, um, and you're probably looking at this quite upset as well, um, but it does engage the audience more. So it means that the audience is really watching and interested in what he's saying. Again, the images, and he's focused on, this is what I'm going to be talking about, and here's some supporting details, but no full sentences, no big paragraphs. Uh, he's got his conclusion and then question time. So again, you can have a thank you or an, just a question area. So that's an example of what you're going to be, um, what you can create yourself if you wish to. Um, I'll just go back to my other one. So as I said today, if you can create your initial PowerPoint, decide on what you're going to do in terms of your speech. Please let me know whether you're going to use um, a detailed plan or whether you're going to write your speech out in total. Um, and as I said, even before the 11th June, um, I'm very happy for you to send through some examples of what you'd like to do. Ask me any questions. Um, I truly want to get you really good marks um, for this presentation. As usual, always available on WeChat. Um, so feel free to contact me and I will see you in the next class.